Have you ever wanted to create your own manga or comic? Just a few pages or a whole book worth? If so, you can probably imagine that it can be a lot of work. In this video, I will show you how you can create a page from start to finish using Clip Studio Paint, which includes a lot of tools to make the whole process as simple and fun as possible. But before we get into it, I want to thank Celsus, the makers of Clip Studio, for sponsoring this video. Probably the best fitting sponsor there is for a topic like this. If you haven't checked out Clip Studio Paint yet, you might want to give the free test version a try after watching this video. So how are you even supposed to start a comic like this? First, we want to sketch out some rough panels as a storyboard. This can actually be quite fun because you can just let loose, make a bit of a mess and play around with various ideas. Keeping everything simple and rough enables us to quickly decide how the panels will be arranged and what happens in them. This gives you an overview of the structure of your story, which is really useful the more pages your comic has. All of this will give you an idea of how the page will read and how the panels look next to each other. Because everything is still rough and you didn't invest a lot of time into a perfect drawing, it will be a lot easier to say, you know what, let me move something around or delete this panel entirely. The point is that you can avoid or fix a lot of mistakes before it's too late. But how do you know where to begin? Personally, I often like to write the rough dialogue of a scene first and go from there. But sometimes I also just like to start with a sketch, having only a rough idea of the text and scene in mind. Then I let it play out in front of me as I draw it. Almost like directing actors and seeing where you end up. And if I get more ideas while looking at the sketches, I can include them without hesitation. In this example, I'm imagining a comic with two pages side by side. So I divided the canvas into two pages and added some rough panels in various shapes to them. Typically, four to six panels a page are enough. But I have heard people recommend sticking to eight panels or fewer per page. So everything stays clear, organized and easy to read. That's not a hard and fast rule though. I recommend looking at your favorite manga for references regarding the layout. Also, whether your panels are straight or more diagonal and dynamic can really support the visual impact of a scene. These things are difficult to visualize in your head at the beginning though and come with experience. As you'll see in a bit, Clip Studio Paint will make it easy to change things like panels at a later stage of the process. But obviously it's a good idea to get as close as possible as early as possible. The important thing here is to only put down enough on the page to get your idea across and not to get lost in details. Depending on the scene, this could mean certain movements like in a fighting scene for example, a wide shot of a location or a close up of an important object. I like to add facial expressions and some hair to the figures too, just so I can distinguish between the interacting characters. Also, I already draw rough backgrounds, so the perspective and positions of the characters is more obvious when I come back to work with these sketches later on. To add variety, I like to switch between close-ups and wide shots, and some atmospheric panels every once in a while. It might sound like a cheap trick to spare yourself from drawing more difficult panels, but showing something like a cup of coffee in a scene where people drink coffee actually helps with pacing and establishing the location and vibe of a scene. Always gather inspiration from movies, games or other manga if you don't really know how to fill your panels. Take note of how often they show something other than the characters of the scene. Another big advantage of working with the storyboard is that we can already look for spots to place the text balloons. Working digitally means you can change their size, shape and position anytime you want. But nevertheless it's good to factor them into your storyboard, because their position will affect the way people will read the comic. But also because they will probably cover something up that you won't have to draw in the first place. Creating a storyboard can be quite a time consuming task, as a lot of the groundwork is done here. You have to plan a lot and make so many choices before actually drawing the page, but it will make the process of creating a comic or manga much easier once you are certain what direction your story is going to go and what the pages should look like. So with that out of the way, we can finally dive into the comic tools included in Clip Studio Paint. First up, we need to open a new document for the manga project. Go to File, New and click on the comic page icon to see a whole bunch of new options. For now, I'll just call this project test one. Based on your planning earlier, we can now customize the pages, starting with their size. You can set it freely or choose standard sizes like A4 and A5. Also, you can adjust the width of the bleed and resolution. All of these options are especially relevant if you plan to get your work printed. Another choice to make here is whether the project will be in color 
or black and white. While you can change this later, it's usually a good idea to settle on one or the other before you begin. Just know that if you choose monochromatic, even grey tones won't be available while drawing. This is where you would use things like screen tones to convey different shades of grey. But this also means you cannot really use transparent brushes, because the grey tones won't be displayed as they normally would. That's why I typically pick the colors option. If you are planning to get your comic printed, you might not have a choice though. Perhaps you also just like the monochromatic look, even if your comic will only be published on the web. Next we want to check the box for multiple pages. For this example I start with 4 pages. Once everything is set up, we can click OK and we are ready to go. Here on the left you can see the 4 pages. You can click through them and open each one individually. And you can add more pages by right clicking as your story grows. Of course you can also just work with single pages in individual files and organize them into folders. With the layout of the storyboard as our guide, we can start filling the actual page with panels. Creating panels is super easy with the panel tool. Click on this icon and select create panel. In the menu I pick the color for the panel's border and a brush size that will define its thickness. But like many things you can always change these later. The way I like to work with the panel tool is to start with a large panel across the entire page like this. Next I'll divide it into smaller panels, but before I do that, let's take a quick look at what the tool has created for us. We get a folder with a layer mask that has the shape of the large panel. Inside the folder are two layers. One is the background color of the panel, that you can imagine as a piece of paper lying underneath. You won't have to interact with this layer most of the time. The other one is a clear layer that we can use for a sketch or line art. Everything on these layers inside the folder will stay inside the boundaries of the panel defined by the layer mask. So if I draw some lines on either of them, they won't go beyond the panel. For comparison, if I draw on a layer underneath the folder, that background layer will block anything underneath the panel. So in other words, Clip Studio has magically done all the work for us. Of course, you can add more layers inside the folder. For example, one for each character in the scene, but more on that later. One large panel is a bit boring and it also doesn't really fit the storyboard we made. So let's divide it into smaller ones. For that I select the option next to the Create Panel tool, which is called Frame Border. And then Divide Frame Folder. This works similar to a ruler tool. You click on one point on your canvas and drag the line around. When you click again, it divides your panel into two pieces. After applying it to our big panel, we can see that we now have two folders. One for each panel. And once again, Clip Studio has taken care of setting all of this up with just a few clicks. I repeat this a few more times to reveal the layout for the page according to my storyboard. The method that I've shown here creates individual panels that are separate from one another. In comparison, you can also divide a panel such that you get a border between them, but they share the same folder and possibly even layers. Why would you do that? Sometimes you just want that border to support the composition of the panels. This way you can work on one layer that goes across both panels. The tool for doing this is called Divide Frame Border Tool. An immense advantage that these panels have is that you can adjust their size and shape retroactively. Let's say for example that a panel turned out too small, or you want to give it an angle. Then you can simply select the operation menu again and click on the panel to reveal the vector points. From there you just move the point where you need it and it will adjust that change to the other panel next to it. Now that we have created the layout, we can start working on what's inside of them. To start I like to copy and paste the storyboard sketches into them and start refining them. Since we are using Clip Studio, a great way to do that is using 3D models. This is optional of course, and if you feel like that interrupts your workflow, you can skip this step. But it can be of massive help especially when it comes to tricky panels with massive crowds or complicated backgrounds and perspectives. Using my thumbnail sketches as a reference, I pick a pose from the 3D figure folder and drag it onto my panel. Then I adjust it to match the reference a bit more. If you want to know more about how to work with poses, I did a video going into full detail on how you can work with 3D models. It's linked up there in the corner and in the video description. As we saw earlier, the folder of each panel has a layer mask that makes everything outside the panel invisible. This is really useful to work on the composition of the panel before we have even started drawing. You can turn off the mask if you need to see more of the models in order to adjust them. After adding the second character, you might already see where the strength of using the models lies. 
It's not just helpful with anatomy, but also to precisely determine the distance between the figures and therefore estimate the correct size for this perspective. After all, the character who is further away should appear a bit smaller. Same goes for the background. Clip Studio has some great pre-made models of backgrounds for classrooms, parks and stuff like that. But there are also primitive shapes like cubes and planes that we can use to build rough guides for our own purposes. For example, in this thumbnail I have the two characters walking through a hallway. It can be quite difficult to figure out the right perspective, so the walls and the door actually fit the size of the characters. For the mock-up background I take planes from the 3D model folder and place them accordingly. You can rotate them change their size and stretch them. Just click on the plane and drag it along the different options until you are satisfied. The results will be pretty simple, but you get a rough understanding of the perspective you are going to use. Which brings me to the next helpful tool, the perspective ruler. Another way to establish perspective in a scene is using a ruler. Go to layers, new ruler and then select the amount of vanishing points you want to work with. Central and two points are easy to read and maybe you have come across these in school already. With one vanishing point in the center, you can draw a room for example by using horizontal and vertical lines to create the single surfaces. The two point perspective is similar, although the other point enables us to draw the box from a different angle. For dynamic frog and bird perspectives, the three point perspective ruler is essential, though it is a bit more complicated. When you create a three-point perspective, you get a layer with a blue line for the horizon and for each of the three vanishing points, there are lines forming a triangle. Each of the lines has a white dot in the center and two smaller blue dots next to them. If you drag the line using the white dot, the vanishing point stays fixed and if you use the blue ones, you will move the vanishing point accordingly, changing the perspective. As a little exercise, you can recreate the perspective of a reference photo. Simply drag the guidelines along some of the lines you can identify in your photo. Once those are set, you can start drawing lines either by tracing the photo or you can create a fully new drawing that has the same perspective of the photo. It will take a bit to learn how to properly set up such a ruler. But thankfully, there is a super neat shortcut here. If you have used 3D models and objects for the scene earlier, Clip Studio has already created such a ruler for you. You might have already noticed this little ruler symbol on the folder. Click it and the ruler becomes visible. It is already adjusted to the perspective that is used in the 3D scene, requiring no fiddling around with any of the vanishing points. If I change the perspective by dragging the camera button, the ruler changes along with it. This actually is a great way to learn how the ruler works, as changing the 3D scene automatically updates the ruler and you can see how the vanishing points change in real time. Similarly, check out how the perspective shifts if I drag the blue dot of the ruler. You can also tilt the horizon with the roll option or create a more distorted perspective using the perspective parameter and the ruler will follow along with it. With the characters and backgrounds done, we can now focus on adding the speech bubbles, speed lines and screen tones. Since dialogue is usually an important part of most comics, let's take a closer look at the tools Clip Studio gives us for creating them. First up, we can of course simply take a pen of our choice, draw the balloons ourselves and then fill them with the white color using the bucket. Overall though, these speech balloons tend to look shaky and if you scale or transform them, the lines eventually get blurry, so it's not the most effective way to add text to your comic. The better option is to use the fittingly named balloon tools, which you can find in the tool palette. Here you can select between the rounded, ellipse and curved balloons. The ellipse and rounded balloons have their own shapes that transform and scale by dragging them accordingly. The curved balloon tool is used by creating single points by clicking on your canvas and connecting these points to end up with the shape that we need. Then there is the balloon pen that lets you simply draw the speech balloon. There are also tools for creating specific kinds of balloon tails, though I personally prefer to use the pen for them. What all of these tools have in common is that they are using vectors, meaning you can always change the control points and lines or scale them without losing quality. Using the operation menu, you can adjust the typical properties like the line thickness and color. In case the balloon looks too wobbly, you can also simplify it by using the simplify vector line tool that you can find in the correct line menu. Just paint over the area you want to simplify and it will remove some anchor points and smoothen the line. Then you can change the thickness of the lines by using the adjust line width tool. It might seem like a small detail at first, but playing around with the thickness of the speech balloons can really change the vibe. For example, an irregular line strength can give them more of a traditional hand-drawn look. Finally, let's add a few more decorations. 
To add speed lines, you can go to the focus line tool. Just like with the speech balloons, these tools use anchor points, so you can adjust the speed lines however you like. For example, with a certain distance to your subject or following a specific shape. Then tweak the amount of lines, the thickness or distribution. Lastly, I can always recommend browsing the asset section of Clip Studio. For everything I've talked about, you can find pre-made examples that are free to use. Layouts for pages, speech balloons and speed lines. And of course, if they come in the form of vector layers, you can still adjust them to your needs. We are nearly done. What's missing now is some shading. Keeping in mind that there are a few more pages to be done, I aim for something simple. I start by creating a color palette with the tones for my characters as well as anything that needs to have a consistent color scheme. You can sort and save palettes of your characters to have them at hand whenever you need. Next I pick the magic font tool to create selections and fill them with color. Then I add some soft and hard shadows using the airbrush and g-pen respectively. A great way to get quick and consistent coloring is using gradient map layers. I have talked about them in a previous video, but for a comic they are useful to create atmospheric light situations like sunsets or night times. Check out the video in the top right or in the video description. First create a gradient of your liking and then go to layer, correction layer, gradient map to then pick the gradient and glaze your colors with them. If necessary change the opacity and play around with the layer modes to achieve the best result for your purpose. In case you want to go for a more classic manga look or if you chose monochromatic when setting up the page, you can shade your page using screen tones. To do so, choose the screen tone effect in the layer properties section. Click on the screen tone symbol and choose the size and shape of the dots. You can change these settings and turn the filter on and off again at any point. In case you are planning to send your comic to print, this is incredibly useful to prevent the moir effect. Traditionally, to add highlights to screen tones, artists would use a cutter knife to scratch specks of the printed foil and achieve a distinctive look. To emulate that with our digital drawing, we can create a layer mask. Then with a crosshatch brush that has the eraser mode activated, we can create little highlights like this. And there it is. One page of a comic from start to finish. Now on to the next 100 pages. So what will your first comic be about? Or have you already created one before? If you want to know more tips or want me to cover some more techniques, let me know in the comments. And check out my other videos on digital art, especially the tutorials, to learn more techniques and get inspired. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more regular art. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.